Dimitri here. Uh, very happy to, to be here and uh, uh, very happy to see so much interest uh, for the plugin. So uh, last month, uh, Maxon introduced uh, this uh, new plugin for Illustrator that basically connects uh, directly to Illustrator and it continues uh, Maxon's efforts to basically uh, simplify and uh, streamline uh, the workflows uh, that we have for uh, designers. <clears throat> Just to remind you, a few years uh, ago, Maxon released the Cineware for After Effects. So with the Cineware for Illustrator, uh, we basically have the next step to uh, connecting design applications uh, to uh, 3D. Uh, before showing you what the plugin can do, uh, I'm just gonna, I would just like to, to give you uh, a little bit more info on what the thinking uh, was um, when making the plugin. Uh, as you guys know, uh, Cinema 4D is uh, uh, probably uh, one of the most used 3D programs uh, among designers. Uh, Cinema's ease of use, along with the fact that we can get uh, really good results uh, really fast, is something that is uh, quite attractive. Uh, but of course, it's understandable uh, that no matter how easy Cinema is, a 3D uh, can still uh, be uh, scary for some of you. So uh, there are a lot of people out there missing out on using 3D in their work because uh, with 3D you can do some uh, crazy stuff uh, with, uh, uh, with your designs. Um, so uh, inevitably we kept coming back to the uh, same uh, question. Uh, how can we make uh, you feel more comfortable with uh, 3D? And uh, it turns out that the best way to approach this issue is by basically letting you use the software you already know and use uh, day in and day out. And in this case, it's uh, Illustrator. Uh, from the beginning, there were some specific uh, goals uh, that had to be met. And the uh, first one was to respect as much as possible all the workflows already in place inside Illustrator. You shouldn't feel uh, alienated, you should feel as comfortable as ever. So we're basically uh, want you to feel like you're using a new feature set in the application uh, rather than learning uh, 3D. The second goal was to uh, provide the users with all the necessary tools for deep interaction between 2D and 3D. So uh, previewing 3D files inside Illustrator uh, would not be uh, the best solution. Uh, the idea it was to basically allow people to adjust the 3D elements from within Illustrator and allow them also to blend uh, 2D and 3D elements together. And uh, finally, the third goal was to allow the users as much freedom as possible in order to accommodate uh, for different use cases. So. Uh, Cineware for Illustrator is not good just for one uh, single use case, like, uh, for example, mockups, but for a lot of uh, different things. <clears throat> so let's uh, uh, go into, the, uh, into Illustrator and uh, see how the plugin works. So uh, let me switch to Illustrator here. And let me open up uh, this file here. <clears throat> uh, so as I mentioned before, we're using the normal Illustrator workflows. So in order to access the uh, interface, uh, we don't need to do anything special. We just uh, switch to our 3D workspace. I, uh, so here we have the uh, 3D workspace. I'm just going to switch to the other one that fits the screen a little bit more, a little bit better. So now basically we switch to an interface that contains all the panels uh, that allows us to use 3D in our scene. Um, alternatively, we can use, we can access all these uh, panels in uh, the normal uh, Illustrator uh, area. So underneath window and then Cineware. So here we have all the available uh, panels. Now to Load a file, again, uh, we do it the normal Illustrator way. So we can either open the file, or if we have uh, a document open, like uh, here, we can place the file. So this is what I'm gonna do here. 
So I'm going to place the file. And uh, as you can see, we get the normal uh, thumbnail icon um, when we're uh, placing a scene. And I'm just going to use my artboard area here. And now we have 3D inside Illustrator. So let's see what the uh, what these elements do uh, in the in the interface. So at the top we have the control bar, which is basically the equivalent of Illustrator's uh, control bar at the top. And uh, here we have a lot of different options. So we we have the ability to switch cameras, uh, to navigate our under scene, uh, to frame our objects, save Cinema 4D files, save textures, and a lot of other things. The, here we have the materials panel, uh, which is basically the equivalent of the swatches panel here. So basically, uh, what this uh, panel contains, it contains all the materials uh, from uh, Cinema 4D, the, the materials that are inside that specific Cinema 4D file we opened up. Uh, underneath, we have the scene structure panel, and this uh, basically contains everything that is inside our Cinema 4D uh, file. So uh, we, we've categorized it into three categories. So we have the uh, cameras, we have the objects, and we have the lights. So uh, here we, we can see that we have two objects uh, in our scene, star one and star two. We have three cameras and the editor camera four. And uh, we have also a light here. So if I open up the, this uh, scene inside Cinema, you will see again the same structure. So we have two stars, three cameras, and a light. So uh, everything is mirrored and we can uh, control it uh, however we want to. And uh, underneath we have the attributes uh, panel, which is uh, context sensitive. So it basically changes depending on what we have selected. So if I have my, if I select the, uh, this uh, star object here, we have position, rotation, and scale. And if I select my camera, let's select this one, I will have position, rotation, and some uh, specific settings for uh, the camera, so the focal length, the f-stops, shutter speed. And then finally, if I have a light, uh, if I click on that, uh, I will get some options for the light, so color, intensity, and to enable disable shadows. Uh, so now let's see how we can navigate uh, around our scene. Uh, it's really simple. So we just select the Cinema 4D file. And here we have all the, the options available for the navigation. So this button here controls the panning. So we can pan around our scene. This controls the zooming in and zooming out. And this controls the rotation. Uh, now. If I select an object, so let's uh, click on this object here. If I click this button, I can frame based on the uh, object I selected. So I'm going to click this, and you can see my uh, star is uh, framed. Now, this uh, selection uh, method works uh, as well for the navigation. So uh, if I don't have anything selected, uh, if I rotate, I will rotate around my world uh, zero. And if I have something selected, so I'm going to select this star here, I'm going to rotate around that object. So we have a lot of uh, flexibility to uh, position and frame the scene uh, exactly how we want to. Now let's see how we can uh, start uh, blending uh, 3D and uh, 2D elements together. Uh, the first step would be to uh, get rid of this uh, gray background. And uh, to do that is uh, uh, very simple. So I'm just going to go here to my transparency option and select the alpha. And now I basically isolated my uh, these two objects uh, from the background. So if I uh, have a, a vector uh, object, you see I can position it in front at the back uh, however I want to. So let's uh, start uh, playing a little bit just to see how uh, things work. So I'm going to uh, here uh, get rid of uh, this star here. And I'm going to uh, position the other star a little bit differently. And uh, now I'm going to grab 
uh, one of the elements I have here. So now, as you can see, I can uh, I, I have the the vector object. If I uh, if I switch to outline mode, you'll see that uh, this is a vector object, and then we can uh, keep building uh, our scene based on that. So now I'm just gonna add a drop shadow underneath, and if I want to, I can uh, grab uh, some text here. So now I have basically. Uh, just with a few clicks, uh, a nice uh, combination of uh, 2D and uh, 3D uh, stuff. Now the interesting thing is that uh, we can use all the Illustrator uh, tools uh, when uh, working with the 3D. So for example, if I want to use the transparency mask, uh, I can do that because basically uh, Illustrator uh, thinks that uh, this uh, 3D layer uh, treats the 3D layer as an image. So now I'm going to select my uh, star here and I'm going to go into my uh, clipping mask here and create a mask. So let's do that. <clears throat> and let me darken this a little bit. I'm going to duplicate it a few more times. And let me rotate things around. So this is the mask I created. And it's applied on my uh, object. So uh, the cool thing now, of course, if, I, if I'm going to add uh, another uh, vector object underneath. Uh, let's pick a different color. Uh, of course, I can see through my 3D object. And uh, if I want to. Uh, I can keep rotating uh, my uh, 3D file and the mask will uh, remain there. So we have a lot of flexibility blending uh, these uh, things together, 2D and uh, 3D elements. Now let's see how we can do some uh, more uh, advanced stuff. So let me uh, get rid of uh, this mask here and get rid of these elements as well. So now I'm going to go back to my scene and uh, let's say that I want to have uh, something like a, a piece of text in between uh, these two uh, elements. Uh, we can do that uh, in different ways. The simplest way is to uh, basically duplicate the layer, uh, duplicate the, the 3D layer uh, and assign uh, on each layer a different object. So let's do that. I'm going to disable here the first star and then I'm going to go to copy and then paste in front. And now I'm going to select, I'm going to deselect the first star and enable the second star. So now basically I have two layers and uh, each one contains one of these stars. So now I can uh, uh, go in with my text and I can start moving uh, moving things around in front and the back and as you can see we can uh, start uh, blending and uh, uh, working things out the way we want to. The other way is by using object buffers so uh, let's see uh, how we can do that. So if I uh, open up this uh, scene here and uh, let me open this in uh, Illustrator as well Let's say I want to, uh, I'm going to do a quick render. Uh, so let's say I want to, now I, if I select the alpha channel, I cannot get uh, rid of the star. Of course, if I want to, uh, I cannot get rid of the sphere. Of course, if I want to, I can uh, disable it here. But let's uh, pretend that we cannot do that. So uh, we, we can do that with the object buffers. So if I go here in Cinema 4D, you will notice that this uh, option here has uh, a special tag that uh, it basically has uh, the object buffer enabled. Um, so since I've enabled that into my Cinema 4D file, if I go here into my uh, transparency option, I will see another option, not just the alpha, but the buffer as well. So if I click that, it will basically isolate the star object, uh, which is the place where I assigned my uh, object buffer, and now I have my object isolated. So we have a lot of uh, different ways 
uh, to work either with uh, the uh, alpha transparencies or the uh, object buffers. Now let's uh, uh, see how we can uh, assign uh, textures uh, to uh, our uh, 3D files. So let me open up this uh, file here. And as you will notice, we have uh, basically in this file two things. We have our uh, 3D file here. Of course, we can uh, move things around and position it the way we want to. And on top here, we have uh, several different uh, artworks. Uh, so let's say I want to assign this artwork on my uh, coffee cup. Uh, I can do that uh, in, the, in, let's say, the middle one. I can do that quite easily by uh, dragging and dropping. So first I need to locate my coffee cup, which is here, and then uh, find the cup. And then all I need to do is grab this and assign it to the uh, selection here. We don't really need to have a selection, but uh, since we uh, we have uh, an already made selection in uh, our C4D file, we're just gonna use that. So as you can see, we have basically, we assigned our uh, artwork on the cup. So now we can uh, preview exactly how our design looks like on a 3D object. Alternatively, if we already, I'm gonna undo this, uh, if I already have uh, a material there, uh, which in this case I do have a material assigned to the cup, I can adjust that material. So I can uh, click here, I can click on the material, and as you can see, as, uh, as I said before, the Attributes Manager is context sensitive, so I click on the material and I see all the relevant information for that material. So basically here we have some options. So we have color channel, luminance, transparency, reflectance. We don't care about any of those. We, we only care about the uh, color option. So, and specifically about the texture option here. So what I need to do is just grab that texture and uh, uh, drop it on the texture field. So now we basically have that uh, assigned again onto the object. Uh, the reason you would like to do that is uh, if you already uh, created some nice reflections inside Cinema 4D and you don't want to uh, redo them again, uh, so you can basically use the already existing material and just edit it a little bit. So now the uh, nice thing is that we can keep modifying our artwork and the texture will uh, update accordingly. So let me uh, select this object here and uh, if I change the color you notice that my uh, texture updates here as well so we have a nice way of uh, let's say we have a mistake on our uh, on our artwork or we uh, since we applied it on the 3d object we we see that it doesn't really fit exactly how we want to we can keep modifying it and uh, preview exactly how it looks on the 3d object now let's say you have like a really uh, complex uh, artwork, so you don't really want this uh, constant update. So uh, you can basically keep uh, focusing on your artwork and making all the adjustments you want and then uh, assign and then uh, refresh uh, the Cinema 4D scene and uh, get all these changes in one go. So let's see how we can do that. I'm gonna uh, this is the, the option that we need to disable. So this is the, uh, the, the texture updating now is live. So if I click on it, it will uh, change to the pause icon here. So now whatever change I make on my texture, uh, so let's make this change and let's change this. So uh, whatever change I make, as you can see, uh, it's not propagated to my uh, Cinema 4D scene. But once, let's say now I'm, I'm finished with my changes, now if I go back into the uh, play mode, now you will see all these changes have been uh, applied. So we have a lot of uh, different ways depending on how we like to work. Do we uh, like to constantly uh, have the, the update on the texture or do we prefer to, to use more uh, to, to work more on the artwork and then uh, move 
all these changes uh, at the at the last point. Uh, so let me uh, undo this. And uh, now let's say you want to, uh, and one more time. Uh, so now let's say uh, we would like to uh, change the coffee lids uh, to fit more to the to our design. Uh, so I would like to have a darker color on the lids because it fits a little bit better. Uh, of course, we can do that. So we can basically modify the materials that are already uh, inside our Cinema 4D file. So I'm going to go here into the plastic and I can see what my material name is uh, here. And now I'm going to go to the color option here and then select uh, a darker uh, color and my changes will be applied. So not only we can work with uh, artwork that we created in Illustrator, but we can also modify uh, things, uh, modify 3D uh, data inside uh, Illustrator. Um, now, if we start combining all these things, so the, the object buffer, the masks, the fact that we can change materials, uh, we can apply textures, we can have some uh, nice uh, complex interactions. So. Uh, let me open up this uh, file here. And uh, as you can see, of course, uh, we have, this is my uh, 3D object here. And uh, of course, if I want to, I can apply the texture like before. Uh, but the uh, nice thing here, as you can see, is that my uh, 3D object is uh, in between the uh, in between the vector objects? So uh, we have a nice interactive. This is my uh, my vector artwork, and uh, the the other part is the 3D part. So we have a nice interactive way to uh, position our uh, 3D object based on the uh, surrounding uh, artwork. Uh, we could do that before. Uh, but it, it would take a lot of steps. So uh, before uh, Cineware, uh, what you would uh, have to do is uh, first uh, you would have to export this uh, part as an image, import it inside Cinema 4D, then start positioning your uh, 3D object uh, the, w the way you would like to. And then once you have the render, then... Um, bring that inside Illustrator, and uh, if everything fits uh, correctly is fine. If not, then you would have to keep repeating the process. And of course, if the client uh, requested some changes, you would have to repeat that uh, over and over again. So now we basically minimized all these steps, and you can do basically all these steps inside Illustrator without too much of a fuss. Um, now the other cool thing is that we can have uh, not only multiple uh, Cinema 4D files inside Illustrator, but we also have the ability to have multiple instances of the same uh, Cinema 4D file. So uh, let me open up this uh, scene here. And uh, as you can see, we have basically uh, two uh, artboards here. Uh, we have artboard number one and artboard number two. And uh, uh, what you will notice here, this is my 3D file. Uh, so what you will notice here is that we can keep experimenting uh, on our design by just duplicating the artwork and of course the 3D file and then adjusting the different elements from the background or the, the foreground elements. And on top of that, we can keep adjusting our Cinema 4D file. So I'm going to go here into uh, this uh, area here, and I'm going to uh, disable this guy. And also, I'm going to change the color of one of the lights. So I'm going to pick a different color here. So we have a different color for the light, something that fits a little bit more to our scene because we, we keep experimenting and we're trying to find out what the, the best solution is for, for our design. And now if I zoom out, you will notice that uh, basically all the changes we made 
apply it only to this one instance of uh, the Cinema 4D file and not the other. So we can keep experimenting with uh, with our design without having to to think too much. Like uh, you need to, to to create a new file and then create the artwork there. And then if you want to make another version, you need to create another copy of that file. You can do all that inside this uh, one Illustrator file. Um, another really good use case for uh, Cineware for Illustrator is also for reference work. So let's say you would like to, to draw a character. Um, before, uh, what you, you would have to do is uh, go on the internet, uh, find the reference you want from the specific angle, uh, the, the character you want, like if it's like a man or a woman, and basically collect all this information and then start uh, drawing uh, your uh, character. Uh, now with the Cineware for Illustrator you can do that uh, a little bit easier. Of course if you want to you can still keep using the reference uh, you found on the internet but now it's a little bit more of a simpler process. So uh, let's open up this file here and uh, as you can see if we have a, a 3D object this is like a dummy object like the the one uh, artists uh, use to use as reference. Uh, we we have our 3D object and we can position it however you uh, we want to. We can uh, rotate it uh, exactly the way we want to. We can position it uh, and uh, zoom in and out. We have uh, basically the freedom to do uh, whatever uh, we want to. And once we're ready, we can just uh, let's say dim the image here lock the layer and then create a new layer and start uh, drawing uh, over uh, this artwork. But on top of that, the, the cool thing is that since we have a 3D file, uh, we might have some extra options uh, in there. So, and this is the case with uh, this uh, 3D file here. So if I open this in uh, Illustrator, you will notice that we have some uh, boxes here and uh, basically this means that uh, this model is uh, pre-rigged so I can move things around and I'm gonna select this guy the, the head and rotate it a little bit and I'm gonna do the same with the foot so we can start uh, positioning and getting the pose uh, we want exactly how we want to and now if I uh, save my file and then uh, go back into Illustrator, Illustrator will detect that there is a, a change happening. Again, going back to what I said before that uh, we respect the Illustrator workflows, which is something that you would see if you change like a, let's say a PSD file. Uh, so now it says that uh, there is a change uh, that happened. So I click yes and you will see my character has changed. So basically, if we have a, a really nice model, we can basically circumvent all the extra steps that we had to do by looking for a reference, and we can position uh, and uh, rig and uh, uh, pose uh, the character exactly how we want to, and then uh, start working on, on our artwork on top of this layer. And uh, there are a couple of examples uh, done this way. So this is uh, one example done this way. And uh, here's another one. And uh, what you will notice here, if I go, let's uh, go to this uh, file here. What you will notice here if I disable the colors, will notice that there is a C4D file underneath. So what the artist who created this artwork did was exactly what I described before. So he positioned and posed the character exactly how uh, he wanted to and then started drawing over it. So we have a, a really nice workflow to, uh, to work with uh, our reference material. Now, uh, let's see what else we can do. Let's say we have a mixed environment, so uh, 
you are the, the designer and you have uh, a 3D guy along with you on your team and you're working on a commercial. Uh, so uh, you created, the, the 3D guy created an, an animatic and now it's your job to uh, grab that animatic and start making it a little bit nicer in Illustrator because animatics are a little bit uh, more rough. So you basically want to uh, present some nice style frames to your client. We can do that quite easily. So uh, if I open this example here in Cinema 4D and hit play, uh, you will notice that uh, this Cinema 4D file contains animation uh, data. So let's see what we can do with that inside Illustrator. So I'm gonna open up this uh, Illustrator file here. And uh, here we have the Cinema 4D file already placed. And of course, if we want to, we can start uh, drawing things around and making it uh, look uh, as nice as we want. And now we want to go to the other key sequence of, my, uh, of the animation. So what I, need, what I need to do is really simple. Again, normal Illustrator workflows. So I'm just gonna duplicate my artboard and then uh, start uh, working on the next the key sequence. Now to, to load up the uh, another frame, uh, we need to select this uh, specific uh, Cinema 4D instance and go here into the cogwheel option here. And notice what will happen if I start changing this render frame here. Uh, notice what will happen here. So we can start previewing basically our, our animation and we can pick exactly the point uh, we want uh, to use on our style frames. So I'm gonna select the 50th frame here and now I can start uh, drawing around things, making things look pretty and of course repeat this process until I have all the elements I want. So now I'm gonna go here and uh, pick another uh, key sequence. So as you can see we have, uh, we picked all the key sequences we wanted and uh, we started drawing over them. And now let's say that we finished uh, with all the changes. Now all we need to do is export it the normal Illustrator way. So either export it as a JPEGs or export it as a PDF. Uh, we don't need to, to do anything special. Now, uh, let's say again that you have, you're in this mixed environment of uh, 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 3D and uh, 2D people. So you as a designer, uh, you, you want to work with uh, 3D, but you might uh, feel a little bit overwhelmed with all the 3D uh, stuff that you need to learn. So uh, basically what you can do is uh, tell the uh, your 3D guy that uh, I only need to see inside Illustrator only the elements I need to work on. So let's open up uh, this file here. So. If I open this uh, scene here in the Cinema 4D, you notice that it has a lot of uh, different objects and we have objects within objects. So if I open this uh, inside Illustrator, uh, you will notice that it has a little bit more of a complex hierarchy. It's nothing uh, special, but it can be uh, intimidating if you don't know uh, exactly how things work. So let's say you want to work on these uh, two uh, objects, the cube and the tube. So you can tell your 3D guy, listen, I only need to see those. Uh, I don't care about the rest. So uh, then uh, what he will do is really simple. So if you notice uh, here, some of these objects, I uh, have this green highlight. Uh, what that means is that they belong to a different layer. Uh, so if I go to my layers here, uh, I can disable these. So we don't see them here, but of course, uh, because we want to have a point of reference in our scene, we see them in our scene. But my, uh, my uh, object manager here, the structure, is a little bit simpler. So if I go into uh, File, Save, and then go back into Illustrator, uh, notice what will happen in this area here in the scene structure panel. I'm gonna click Yes, that I would like to update it. 
and now we only have the objects that we need to concentrate on. So uh, we're not bothered by all this uh, clutter. We have only the objects that we need to change. Now, if, uh, let's say, uh, you're a one-man show, so there is no uh, uh, 3D guy, uh, what we've done is uh, uh, partnered up, we've partnered up with uh, TurboSquid, so we have a lot of uh, different uh, 3D objects, uh, common use case, uh, let's say, objects, that you could use uh, for your uh, designs. So uh, here are some of these objects. And they, they cover a lot of uh, different areas. So as you can see here, this is uh, packaging. Uh, so basically what you need to do is grab the object and then apply the artwork on this uh, label here. Uh, or do the same here as well. And uh, there are a lot of different use cases. So we have packaging here, we have CD covers. Uh, here, this is another uh, good example uh, of uh, a presentation, let's say, tool. So you want to showcase, let's say, your uh, the the website for your client, and you need to present it in a nicer way. So uh, what you can do is grab a screenshot of the website you created and uh, put it on the uh, display here, and you have a nicer uh, presentation for your client. And uh, the same goes here. You designed uh, an application. You apply uh, the uh, your UI work. Uh, here on the mobile phone and you're good to go and it covers a lot of uh, different uh, use cases and of course this collection here we have some pre-posed uh, uh, models and of course this uh, collection will keep uh, getting bigger and bigger uh, through the months uh, now these objects you need to do the minimum uh, work uh, <laughs> required because these are already uh, UV'd, they already have uh, the lights that you need, so the only thing you need to do is apply your artwork and, uh, of course, hit render, and uh, that's it. So uh, let me show you uh, how this looks in uh, Inside Cinema. So if I go here into my UVs, you don't need to know this, but I'm just going to show you uh, how the UVs look. So as you can see, the UVs, are very clean uh, so basically you will have the minimum fuss uh, possible and let's see how this uh, looks inside Illustrator uh, so if you download one of these assets uh, what you will get uh, this is one of these assets you will get an Illustrator file and some links so let's open up this file here and uh, here we have uh, a template uh, that we can base our artwork on and here we have our uh, 3D object. So we can just uh, move it around and do all the stuff we discussed before. Uh, so now based on that template we know exactly uh, where we need to uh, position each of uh, each part of our artwork. So now let's say we're working on uh, on the front part of the design. I'm just gonna do something really simple, nothing complicated. So this is my my front part, and uh, this is the the background, the whole background. So I'm just I'm just gonna uh, make uh, have a different color just to make things a little bit easier. So now I'm gonna group these things. I you don't need to group them. I'm just uh, uh, doing that out of habit, and uh, now I'm gonna go into my material here and drag it as we mentioned before on the texture and as you can see everything fits exactly to the borders of the objects. Now to access these uh, what you need to do is either go to uh, turbosquid.com uh, slash Cineware and uh, you will find basically here a site that has uh, free assets along with uh, some uh, paid content which is also divided into collections so depending on what you're working on you can select uh, a whole collection and uh, uh, work with uh, these objects or alternatively you can access these uh, inside Illustrator as well so if we go here uh, here we have the this button that 
uh, basically tells us that uh, here we can find the assets. So if I click here, we get a, a pop-up inside Illustrator, and now we can navigate uh, the different assets uh, possible. Uh, so we have a, a lot of different ways to, to access this uh, content. Now, uh, what you need to keep in mind is that everything uh, you do uh, with uh, 3D will be uh, render intensive. So uh, let me open up this, uh, uh, ah yeah, it's already open. Um, so uh, if I hit uh, render here, uh, the scene uh, will render uh, quite fast. Uh, but if you want to, you can customize things. So as you can see, uh, this took uh, seven seconds uh, to render. Uh, but if you want to have like a, a really fast updates, you can modify your scene exactly the way you want to. Because let's say you want to, uh, to work on your uh, texture and uh, you don't want to wait for the render. Uh, we can modify things. So the, the first thing that I would uh, disable is uh, disable the shadows because we don't really uh, care about them when we're previewing uh, things. So I'm going to go here and uh, disable those. And now I'm going to uh, hit render again. And uh, uh, what you will see is that we, we saved up uh, a little bit of uh, time but of course we can keep modifying things so now I'm gonna go here to my standard render I'm gonna disable anti-aliasing anti-aliasing is basically uh, making the edges of my uh, uh, object look a little bit more crisp so now I'm gonna disable that because I don't really care about that and I'm also gonna disable um, I'm also gonna drop the resolution a little bit uh, so let's do half uh, and now if I hit render, uh, you will notice that uh, I didn't even have to to wait. Like it, it doesn't even register. The, the time doesn't even register. It, uh, it says that it's uh, uh, zero seconds. So we can basically modify the scene exactly the way we want to in order to accommodate uh, the way we work. Do we want to have a really nice, uh, uh, beautiful rendered results? Or do we want to work fast and then once we're ready, hit the final uh, render settings. So as you can see here, we went from seven seconds to something that is, let's say, one uh, second. Uh, so that is uh, a really uh, quick overview of uh, what you can do with a plugin. Uh, there's a lot of uh, stuff you can do, but this is like uh, some, some of the basics.